Have you ever thought about how people will remember you? Again, this is Memorial Day weekend. A day of remembrance. Ever thought about how you will be remembered? I entitled the message, Four Things That We Will Leave Behind at Death. Things that we did or doing now on earth. Things that will be left behind. Things by which we will be remembered. Let me give you my list. Things that we will leave behind at death. Number one, seed. Seed. Seed that we have sown. My wife and I decided this year, and it was kind of interesting because I had been thinking about it, and when I brought it up, she said, I've been thinking of the same thing. I've heard it said for years, when you get married and have a long marriage, you just pretty much know what the other person's thinking. You become more like the other person. So we decided that we were going to put out some tomatoes and things like that. So we got some of these boxes. You don't have to bend over. We got uh, the, the right kind of soil and put in them, and, and uh, we put out some plants. And we did this really, to be honest with you, with those nephews, or we call them grandchildren of ours. And they were so excited about it. And those plants are growing, and they're healthy, and they're coming up out of the ground. And one of the tomato plants was those little small tomatoes. And it already has little tomatoes on it. I told my wife, the boys are going to be so excited. And even though we put plants in the ground, we put in one of the boxes just seed. And it's already came up. And as we go through life, we're constantly sowing. We are sowing seed. Now, there's a couple of different types of seeds. There's good seed. I think this is contributions that we make in life that are helpful to our family to our friends, sowing good seed. Things at times no one else knows about. But we had a conviction in our heart to do something and we sowed that seed. And when it came to fruition, it was a blessing to someone. Seed. But there's also bad seed. I couldn't help but think of the old saying that people used to throw around a lot, talking about a person sowing their wild oats. 
to some degree, most of us probably did that. And it's not too bad when we think of it in those terms, something that we did in past. That now because of our relationship with Christ who has changed us, we don't do that anymore. But even as children of God, because we live in this fleshly body, there are times that we are guilty of sowing bad seed. Just a word. Something we said to someone that hurt that individual. That could be bad seed. Now the way to correct that is to go when you realize that Acknowledge it. Apologize. But as we go through life, we are continually sowing seed. And we'll be remembered for the good seed and unfortunately for the bad seed. We'll leave that behind. Seed that we have sown. Second, the name by which we are known. Seed that we have sown, the name by which we're known. Going back to our Memorial Day thought, oft times, people who made some contribution which resulted in the loss of life. And it was so big that it became a national landmark. There are names that we can recall that most of us know immediately who they are and what they did. We associate with them. Now, everybody's not in that cave. On that Vietnam Wall, as well as all the others, the World War I, II, all of Iraq, all of the other wars, there are names on that wall that perhaps no one knows anything about except their family. The name. You may never make a lot of national headlines. I won't either. But at least to a group, it may be a small group, it may be a larger group, but at least to a group, they know you by name and your name will be remembered. Proverbs 22, verse 1. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. How true that is. How true that is. I look back at people that I had so much confidence in, so much respect. Very few people may have known them as far as their name was concerned. But I look back, and I remember them. And there's different times. I can't help but think of my father-in-law. There's so many times that I'll say something to my wife that reflected on something her dad did or something her dad said. perhaps not known outside of the little community 
in which he lived. But I remember him by his name. The same thing will be true for us. The name by which we're known. Thirdly, time which we have blown. I think you all agree with me that God has allotted us a time. That time began, in my opinion, at conception. That time will end when God calls us. We have no idea how long that time will be. I don't, you don't. The only thing God tells us is that there will be an appointment that we keep. That's death. He doesn't say when or how it will occur. He just says it will. And I believe that not only because I have read it in the Bible, but because in my 70 years I have seen so many people pass this life. We have a period of time. God gives us that. And for children of God, when we are saved, we are given such a responsibility. A responsibility to the world. I think it begins in our family and it spreads out. And in light of the fact that we only have so much time, it's important that we don't waste that time. Paul said this in Ephesians chapter 5. He said, see then that you walk circumspectly, that means carefully, not as fools, as wise. Watch this. Redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. To redeem means to cash in. Take advantage of the time that we have been forgiven. And share that with someone else. Now God gives us time to enjoy things. Most of us will leave this place this day We will gather with family. We'll be with friends. God gives us time to enjoy. But we must remember what the number one priority is. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. That's when it really becomes valuable. What we do in this life the time that we have in this life to do kingdom work. That will be left behind. Seed that we've sown, the name by which we're known, time which we have blown, and these bodies of flesh and bone. I could stand up here and it would not be of great value to remind you as we age, as we get older, we find seemingly more and more and more aches and pains. And a lot of those can be because of situations. It can be difficulties that we face in life. 
But it's compounded, I think, by the fact that our bodies begin to tire. They begin to wear out. Yesterday was a very busy day for my wife and I both, and I think we come to the back porch and just collapsed. You know, as I think back, even five years, but certainly ten years ago, I could have done every bit of that and not collapsed. I'm getting older. And the body reminds me of that. There will be a day when we leave all of that behind. Paul said, 1 Corinthians 15, Now this I say, brethren, watch this, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. We will not go to heaven in these bodies. Save folk. We will not go to heaven in these bodies. These fleshly bodies, we'll leave them behind. I mean, preacher, I don't have a body. Yeah, you'll have one. But it won't be this one. We'll leave this one behind. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 2. In these bodies we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house. That's a body which is from heaven. We leave this one behind, but we get a new one. I love this picture in Revelation 21. Just listen. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Isn't that a blessed thought? How wonderful. What are we leaving behind? I think it's a very personal question. I don't think it's appropriate to look at someone else that we have in our imagination as being this horrible person and say, have you ever thought what they're leaving behind? No. I think it's a very personal thing. I think it's something that each of us need to ask ourselves. Am I leaving behind? I think it's a sobering thought, and I think it's something that every one of us need to consider. So as we bow our heads together...